Hey yo man, it's the fly guy himself, Westside Gun. You tune in to hot new hip hop. Bo 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 bo. Yeah man, you know, growing up in Buffalo, it was, it was it was fun actually. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, we grew up in the east side of Buffalo, man. It's just, it's real hood, but it was just like a lot of love. Like maybe even if it was crazy, you really didn't understand the crazy part. You know what I'm saying? So you would hang out in different neighborhoods. We like we grew up early. You know what I'm saying? It was, I mean, I remember like literally like hustling, like not even on no like drug shit, but just grinding, getting pieces delivered to school, selling slices at like 12 years old. Like it was just, you know, we, we just had fun, man. We, we grew up so early skipping school. That's when Jordans used to come out on Wednesdays. I don't think y'all know about that. Jordans used to come out on Wednesdays, man. And, uh, we used to skip school, man, come back like third or fourth period, man, with the Jordans on. I mean, we was literally kids. So, you know, you just grew up fast and, you know what I'm saying? It was very hip hop, very, it was just raw, man. Buffalo is one of them cities a lot of people don't know about, but it's just raw. You know what I'm saying? The energy there is crazy. You always got to watch it back. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, growing up, it was just, it was a lot different. You really didn't worry about that. You know, it was more fist fights. You didn't worry about, oh shit, somebody got shot. Like now it's like, you don't even want to go in a damn corner store no more without watching your back. You know what I'm saying? But like then it was just, it was all love in the city, man. You know what I'm saying? We grew up so early, it's crazy because I look at kids now that's like, you know, 9 and 10 and 11, they innocent. You know, when we was 9, 10, 11, we was already thinking about getting money. Like, we was already, you know, hanging out in a, in a neighborhood 30 minutes away. You know what I'm saying? Like, we never had a curfew. We never had, we used to hang out downtown as kids. Like, we we really never had no rules. So it kind of taught us to be like, grown early you know what i'm saying so it's like right now we like young ogs you know what i'm saying people respect us because they've been seeing us since we was kids out there in the street like you know it's not about the music you could go to buffalo you know three four years ago and be like who was benny and the whole city could tell you listen what i was listening to as a kid was like I mean, I remember all the way back in the days, like, no lie, like, as a kid listening to, like, Too Short and N.W.A. and shit like that, like, you know, I wasn't supposed to listen to it, but, you know, you just got older relatives that used to play it, and then my aunt, you know what I'm saying, who lived in my house too, my Aunt Michelle, you know what I'm saying, she was always into hip-hop, so she used to, like, if she goes somewhere, that's, you know, that's back when you... uh Tape it, you know what I'm saying? Put the put the VHS in, you know what I'm saying? And, and tape will come on, you know, BT or whatever the case may be. And um, MTV. So it was just like, I learned how to do that when I was a kid. Like, seriously, because when she come home or after she, you know, because she was a teenager. So, you know, she hang out with her friends. And when she come home, she'll watch it, you know what I'm saying? And um, I just learned as a kid how to tape the videos and watch it and salt and pepper and LL and you know, all of that, you know what I'm saying? But I really didn't understand it. I was a kid. We just dancing, we having fun and look cool. You know, Big Daddy Kings, Cool G Raps, the, I remember the self-destruction video, like all that shit used to be raw as hell growing up, you know what I'm saying? And then we learned, you know, how to, uh, you know, dub on tapes, putting the tissue in it, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, man, I've been through, I've been, I, <laughs> hip hop is us, man. Like I, I grew up in this shit my whole life, you know what I mean? But when I start really understanding it was like, you know, like the Illmatic days, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the the early, like 92, 93, you know, like Griselda, it was, it started off, you know what I'm saying? Just like me just being hungry and like, yo, I know that this can be the illest shit of all time. Like that was my mindset because I always knew, like, the way I think, bro, is crazy. Like, I can't even explain it. You know, some people can explain. Like, I can't even explain it. The shit just, it just happens. Like, I, I have, like, a certain genius. So I always knew, like, this shit was going to pop. You know what I'm saying? And I used to go to heads and be like, yo, you know, let me hold some money down to put towards this, put towards that. Nobody wanted to fuck with me because I was rapping over boom bap shit and they felt I needed to sit on a couch and pop bottles. 
Nobody wanted to invest in me. That shit made me work even harder, hustle even harder. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was in the street still to do what I had to do to fund this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because even being on, you know what I'm saying, just coming home from prison, it was just like, yo, I, I'm just going to make this sacrifice. Like, it's a lot that happened to get Griselda to where Griselda is. I did everything on my own, put every dollar in it, into this shit. You know what I'm saying? So it was like... Because I had faithfulness and I already knew, like, with my business mind and how I move and me having somebody like Conway and having somebody like Benny, we was unstoppable. And Derringer, we could be unstoppable. Like, hands down, this is the illest shit. Like, and not to even take nothing away, I'm a fan of hip hop. I love everybody's shit. But, you know, a lot of people, the majority of the people, like, I respect, respect, has been out for 20 years. There's nobody like in the last decade that I could say, you know, and like I said, I respect everybody. Don't don't get it twisted. I'm not trying to say it in that way because it's a lot of people that came out in the last decade as my homies and we cool and we even make beautiful music together. But I knew like the impact of a team. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no teams that came out that was strong like that. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, you had your G units, your dip sets. You know, that was all, that was after uh you know, the Wu era, the Mob era, the Capone and Noriega era, like, you you know, um, I call that, you know, just like the Golden Age era. But, like, it was nobody, no crew that was really out, especially, with you know, from New York that could represent New York besides ASAP, you know what I'm saying? But I was just like, yo, the shit that we say was different from ASAP, though. Like, it, we was, we, we got to fill that street void. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the dudes, the classic, what people remember, like, Nobody really don't want to be, you know, back in the day, used to want to be Nas. Used to want to be Ray and Ghost. You know what I mean? Used to want to be, you know what I'm saying, Big Daddy Kane with the chains on. Used to want to be Rakim. Used to want to be LL. You know what I'm saying? People idolized them. You know what I'm saying? And, and the game just got so watered down. You might dance to it, but it wasn't, you don't really respect them. You know what I'm saying? You might party to these dudes. But it's just like, okay, after the song is over, then what? You know what I'm saying? It was it it has no substance. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, yo, we gon we gonna bring the classic shit back. You know, this is what the game is missing. I mean, it means everything because we're sounding like how we supposed to sound. You know what I'm saying? Like how can we sound like we're from anywhere else? We're not from anywhere else. We're from East Side Buffalo. You know what I'm saying? And 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 our our sound and our our uh, lyrics is just like, you know what we've been through, you know, we didn't we didn't seen a lot of shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like it's shit that we we can't even talk about. But it's like that's what influenced our music. Like we know what we done or seen. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like. The shit just come out so easy. Like, it doesn't take time. That's when we, when we write these projects. Like, my brother literally just made a project right now. He just made it. You know what I'm saying? And, like, a couple weeks ago, he didn't write down one bar. He just made a whole album and did not write one bar down. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, the shit is, is it's a little too authentic, if you ask me. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of rare because... It, don't know authentic shit come out nowadays. We get respected from all the OGs because they they haven't seen it done since them. Uh, if you talk to Ghost, if you talk to Ray, or you know, you, you know, Recipes Prodigy, like you know, Sean Price, like these was all people that you know, uh, Royce, just anybody. Even you, you, you ask the OGs about lyrics and you know who's doing it right now. They're going to say Griselda. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think people kind of get that now you know what i'm saying it's not about the numbers or the followers like that you know our shit is just so authentic and real and people love it and it's just so much for the culture that you know people support it fully that's probably like the illest shit to me that i've done so far because it was just like how the fuck because in my rhymes i used to always talk about i want to meet mf doom i want to you know i always told people like yo if i could do a song with somebody because before I was mentioning, like, how you asked me before who would I work with, and it was Kanye. Before Kanye, I was saying Doom, but now since I work with Doom, I can say Kanye. But, um, yeah, man, Doom is a legend, man. I, always, I thought his style was always just so raw, unorthodox, just something fucking different. You know, I was listening to Doom for years, and 
you know, where I'm from, people really wasn't on like the underground wave, you know what I mean? Like I was just always different. Um, you know, working with Shady is dope. You know what I'm saying? Like Eminem was always Conway's favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like he can recite all his shit. You know what I'm saying? Like he literally knows all his projects. You know what I'm saying? Like you could put him on the spot, he can rap, he can rhyme the rhyme. Like he's an Eminem fan. You know what I'm saying? And that you know, it was growing up watching, you know, ever since Eminem dropped and bro was just always you know, it's it's really a dream come true from him because it's like you fucking, you know, get drafted to the Bulls after watching jo Jordan being your favorite fucking, you know, player ever, you know, or somebody going right now coming out of, you know, college going straight to play with LeBron. It's like this shit is a dream come true. You know, with me, it was like, you know, Marshall always been dope to me. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, you know, I was I was I was always more like the. You know, the the Nas, Ghost, Ray, Prodigy, you know, the street, raw shit, you know what I'm saying? But I always respected Marshall for the bars. I always thought, like, lyrically, he was one of the best. I always thought that, you know what I'm saying? I, I can never take that away from him. But, you know, me personally, you know, I was just like that straight, just raw, fly shit. Like, you know, but it's dope, man. You know what I'm saying? They 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 supporting everything we got going on, man. Big up to you know the shady staff, man. Whatever you believe in, man. You you just work hard to achieve it. Don't never get that shit up. You gotta understand. We've been we've been rapping and having fun with this shit since we was kids. You know what I'm saying? From a city where nobody ever made it from. So you, we didn't have no heroes to say, hey, that's such and such. We want to be like that. We never had that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm glad that kids now and, and, and you know, like we like the OGs of the streets now with, with the rap shit because it's like we the ones that made it. So when you see West Side Gun, when you see Conway, when you see Derringer, when you see Benny, it's like, oh, that those is those is the guys. Like, you know, we believe in them. We, we want to be like them. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, I just tell people don't give up because look look what we went through. Look at the stories and, you know, bro being shot in the head twice, losing Sheen Gun, me going to the feds, Benny going to the feds. We just going through real, like, real life street shit, bro. Like, this, you know what I mean? And, and not, like I said, when people were, you know, shutting the door in my face, wouldn't give me shit. I had to go out here and do what I had to do because I had the vision. Like, I never gave up, even if it took me 20 years to get to where I'm at right now. This didn't happen overnight. This is a 20-year a story, you know? So if it don't work in one, two, three, four years, five years, six years, guess what? That seventh year might be the one. So you, if you give up, you will never fucking know. So if you got a dream, man, stick to that shit. 2018 is the album. You know what I'm saying? 2018 is a lot more fashion. You know, it's going it's going to be I got a lot of designs already cooked up, so I'm looking forward to 2018. You know what I'm saying? Like this is really about to be like the best year of my life, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs>